Hey guys, what's going on? My name is James and I like beers. Today, we're gonna to be making French toast with a berry compote and a bourbon maple syrup. Hang around, check it out, you're in for a treat. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna prepare the wet side of our French toast. So we're gonna get everything together, we're gonna to mix it all up, and then we're gonna add in the bread so we can get it ready for the griddle. So we're gonna start off, we got, uh, we got two cups of milk in our tin, uh, and then we're gonna add in a couple of eggs. So we're gonna go egg number one, egg number two. Have you ever got a shell in your milk? And, no, I don't do that. Why would I ever get shell in there, man? Professional egg cracker. Egg cracker extraordinaire. So then we have our three eggs in there. We're gonna add in about a tablespoon, metric tablespoon, which in reality is like a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're just gonna kinda go to town on that. We're using the Saigon cinnamon. It's actually a little bit more flavorful than your standard like run of the mill cinnamon. I like it, it's great. Uh, and then we're gonna use about half the amount of nutmeg. Um, so with nutmeg, you wanna put in a lot less than you do the cinnamon because it's a little more powerful. Uh, and we're gonna have to cut this because there's still a paper seal on this. Why, does that mean you don't use it? Do you even cook with cinnamon, do you, do you even know? All right, so we're gonna use a little bit less nutmeg. We're gonna go to town on the nutmeg. We might actually need more cinnamon. That's a lot of cinnamon. Uh, and then we're gonna go with some vanilla extract. We don't wanna go too crazy on this stuff. It's really, really strong. So we're gonna go with like a literal teaspoon, not like a metric teaspoon. So just a tiny little bit of that stuff in there. Splash more, there we go. Nailed it. So we're gonna kind of mess this up a little bit. Let it get around. And the reason why we wanna use like this big flat dish is we've sliced up like some uh, some loaved French bread, um, some like thick crusty loafy French bread about an inch thick. And we wanna be able to have the space to like place it in there and uh, let it absorb the batter that we're making right now. Bro, this already smells like heaven. Uh, now we're gonna add in the tiniest little amount of sugar. I don't need, I don't need a lot of sugar like in my French toast because I'm already sweet. So I just don't need that in my life. But we're gonna add in like about a tablespoon and then another tablespoon. That's all. All right, let's get this going. This is like a great like post successful date night food, you know? Like you wake up and you're like, and then you look next to you and you have like one of two like very visceral reactions. You're either like, oh God, what have I done? Or you're like, hey. So the bread, what we did with the bread is we cut it up last night. Um, and why we did that is we want it to dry out a little bit. We don't want it to get like crusty, but we want it to dry out so it'll actually absorb the, uh, the batter that we're making. And then it holds up better when you actually go to throw it on the griddle. And we're gonna place it in there and we're gonna kind of just give it a quick press down so it absorbs a lot of that, uh, that tasty num nums that we put in there. Tasty num nums. And we're gonna let these sit in there for about five, four or five minutes. Uh, after about two minutes, we're gonna flip them and let the other side get in there, but they're gonna sit in there for a bit. Okay, while we're waiting. So today we're gonna be drinking Belching Beaver's Peanut Butter Milk Stout, which is a great breakfast beer and you don't have to go to meetings. Hashtag pay me. Okay, so with our French toast, we're also gonna make a simple berry compote. And uh, that's a, just a fancy way of saying we're gonna cook some berries down in some lemon juice with a little bit of sugar until we end up with like this berry goo. So we're gonna do strawberries and raspberries. Raspberries, don't worry about breaking them down. You don't need to do that. But the strawberries, they're a little big. You wanna kinda cut them up a little bit just to kinda get smaller pieces. Otherwise, you're gonna be sitting there cooking them for like 17 days. We're gonna pit them real quick. Then we're just gonna cut them up into like fourths. Uh, and then we're gonna head over to the stove and we're gonna start making our compote. So we're just gonna start slicing berries and throwing them into the pan. Uh, we're just using a medium, like 1.5 liter, four, four quart saucepan, nothing crazy. So like as far as pans go, I do always use stainless steel. Uh, the only time I don't is if I'm using cast iron. Uh, stainless steel is extremely versatile. You can do just about anything with it. It gives you a lot of control. There's a bit of a learning curve with it, but if you take a little bit of time and you actually like figure it out, you'll be amazed at the stuff you can do with a simple like 10, 12 piece set of pans. Like it's amazing. So we're gonna go equal parts strawberry, equal parts raspberry. So it depends on kind of what you're working with. We're gonna make a lot of this cause it's delicious. You can put it on all sorts of other stuff, not just French toast. It's really good on regular toast. It's really good, like actually insanely good on ice cream. I know that sounds weird to put like hot syrupy stuff on ice cream, totally out of this world. So we're gonna make a lot of it um, cause that's all I know how to do is make food for huge amounts of people. So now we're gonna head over to the sink. We're gonna rinse these guys off real quick, strain them through a colander. Put them back in. You gonna wash your pan? Cause all the dirt's in your pan, dummy. The dirt's the flavor, bro. All right, so now we're gonna get our lemon in and we're just gonna break it down into quarters real quick and then we're just gonna juice it right into there. So we're gonna go of one full lemon and just get the juice all up in there. 
And again, with citrus, it's best to cut it a little bit offset so you cut through the membranes and that allows the juice to actually release from the fruit. Uh, if you don't cut through the membranes, you're really not doing much with your life. We did just do our first flip on the, uh, the French toast, the first round. So we're doing four pieces at a time. We're doing a total of eight pieces because we got to feed uh, a couple of people because John's hungry. A couple of people hungry. A couple of people hungry. He's like multiple hungry. Uh, and then we're going to get our berry compote on the stove here in just a second. And then once we get this guy going, we're going to start on our maple bourbon syrup, which is so fucking good. So we're going to get our berry compote rocking on the stove. We're going to hit it at low. Uh, we've got about four cups of berries in there and the juice of one lemon. We're going to let that go on low for just a little bit. We're going to add in about a teaspoon of sugar. We don't need to add too much because the berries are already sweet. Um, if you use a different berry, like if you use like a boysenberry or a blackberry, add a little bit more sugar to taste just because they're a little more tart, but kind of play it by ear. But you can do this with really any berry you can think of. So feel free to like try all sorts of different stuff. Cook it down until it turns into goo. Sugar time. Sugar time. Yeah, that's good. So next we're going to make a bourbon maple syrup. So we're going to start off with a couple of tablespoons of butter in a saucepan and we're going to get that kind of melted and then we're going to kind of go from there. So whenever you're melting butter, Always start like low as low can be, all right? If you burn your butter, it'll ruin whatever it is that you're trying to make. We got about two tablespoons of butter in there. We're gonna let it melt down, and then once it's melted down, we're gonna start in with the other fun stuff. This is good. Peanut butter milk stout? Yeah. Really good. And it tastes like peanut butter, so you don't feel bad like drinking it at like 10 in the morning. Isn't peanut butter bad for you too, though? No, peanut butter's great. Do they think they have like an almond butter beer? Like for like the LA. ultra hipster, yeah. like the ultra hipsters in LA. So as we're doing this compote, it's a good idea to keep the berries like down, like keep pressing them down and they'll slowly start to like blow up. And as they blow up, they're gonna release their own juices and that's gonna keep everything cooking. If you have like, you know, giant chunks of strawberries hanging out over the top and they're not like getting down under the liquid, they're not gonna cook fast enough and you're gonna end up with raspberry mush and strawberry chunks, which is good, but we want it to be kind of homogenized, like all be the same consistency. Our butter is now melted, so we're gonna add in like, two ounces of uh, bourbon. We're just gonna use some Maker's Mark and we're gonna let that get into the butter. Now we wanna kinda cook off some of the alcohol and then as, after that gets going, we're gonna drop in like eight ounces of maple syrup and we're gonna let that all kinda cook down. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna get our French toast out of the batter and into the pan. So we're preheating our pan right now. As soon as it gets up to temperature, we're gonna drop in a little bit of butter and then those guys are going in and we're gonna cook them until they're like a beautiful golden brown and you're gonna be like, oh, it's delicious. When you're doing French toast, if you cut it too thin, like an inch is like ideal. If you go any thicker than that, like the batter won't get into the bread. And if you go any thinner than that, it won't like hold up on you. Like it'll fall apart. So even if you cut it the day before and you cut it too thin, it's gonna crumble on you when you go to cook it in the pan. If you do too thick, you're gonna end up with like bread in the middle and it's not gonna be French toast-ified. So an inch, that's like your, that's your playing ground is an inch thick slice of bread. We used to use a loaf of like crusty French bread, like crusty on the outside, like kind of that chewy crust. A lot of people like brioche. Personally, I think it's too sweet, but to each their own. So when using like a stainless steel pan, I, I like stainless steel everything. So I use a stainless steel turner. And what that allows me to do is I can really like dig into the pan and not have to worry about like scraping the, like the nonstick coating off. I don't have to worry about that. You can't like break this pan. You can do anything you want to it and it's not gonna hurt it. So now we're just gonna take our stick of butter and just kind of put a light coat in there. Oh yeah, we're ready. Uh, and then we're gonna start stacking in our French toast. Looks like we're gonna be able to fit like three in at a time. All right, so we've cooked uh, a lot of the bourbon alcohol out of our butter back here. Now we're gonna add in eight ounces of maple syrup. We're gonna keep it on low. We don't wanna burn the sugars in the maple syrup. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in. This is just some organic maple syrup made from like trees. And then we're just gonna simmer that uh, for about ever. So one thing you don't want to do like when you're making this is use like stuff that's not actually maple syrup. If you use like Aunt Jemima's like, you know, syrup style product, it's just made with like too much like corn syrup and it'll burn like immediately. It's not like maple syrup. It's a totally different concept. So buy like maple syrup organic if you can. We're just getting our flip on there, slightly browning, which is where we want to be. Uh, and now we're gonna get the other slices of bread into our batter and let them start soaking. So you wanna continually stir the maple syrup. If you don't and it starts to burn, you can lose the whole thing pretty quickly. Um, again, a lot, the more sugar you add into something, the, the worse that it has like the chance of burning. So maple syrup obviously has some sugar in it. Keep stirring, keep stirring, keep it on low, trust the magic. With the compote, what we're doing is we're taking the liquid that all the berries are releasing and we want to bring all that down until it like starts to turn into like a, more of a glaze. Keep stirring that, but it's not as important as the maple syrup. The maple syrup needs your love. So what we're gonna do right now is after the, like, the French toast is fully cooked, we're gonna kind of turn it on its edge and then just kind of guide it around. So that way any leftover like egg batter or anything like that on the edges gets cooked. And it's because it's like about an inch thick that it might not cook on the outside, so we're just gonna do that real quick. 
So our syrup's been simmering for about 10 minutes and we've been constantly stirring. Once it starts to like bubble on the top, that's when everything is like getting together. Uh, so we're just gonna keep stirring it, keep stirring it, and as you stir it, you're gonna notice that like, it's gonna start bubbling more as you stir it. That's when we're like, we're getting there on the syrup. So the syrup's just about done. Taste test. Yeah, yeah, it's done. So once it's done, it's important to actually remove it from the heat so it doesn't keep cooking and burn. The berries are still going, so they need time. We're still reducing the liquid in there. We want that to get thicker, so that's gonna keep going. We're gonna keep stirring it, let it keep happening. Berries. We got our French toast, it's out of the griddle. We got a little bit of pepper bacon that we made earlier. We're gonna do a couple of slices of fresh strawberry on top. Next, we're gonna go with our berry compote. So we're coming straight off the stove top. We're gonna use a slotted spoon to try and leave behind as much liquid as possible. We're gonna grab a grip of it. And again, this is just raspberries and strawberries, but it's so good. And we're just gonna come right across the top of it. Let it kind of cascade down the strawberries, show them off a little bit. Oh my God. All right, so then we're gonna come in with our bourbon maple syrup and we're just gonna use a, a light spoon, give it a quick stir, and we're just gonna drizzle that over the top of the compote, letting it get down into that maple syrup, or down into that maple syrup, down into that French toast. All right guys, so this is the final product. We've got our French toast here with a berry compote uh, and a bourbon maple syrup. It's absolutely amazing. Give it a try. They're gonna be so brutal. Mm. Nailed it? Mm-hmm. The sweetness of the French the toast. The with bourbon, the, right? The tartness mm -hmm. of the, the berries. Pot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mom doesn't even like sweet, and she likes Pretty it. Pretty awesome, and I don't like sweet. It's a one way ticket to Flavor Town. How many mm -hmm. tickets? One. I was, that was, that was like the one, bro. That was it. I was ready. I was firing. Like, I didn't do anything stupid. Again, we added in the juice of one lemon. I'm going to start that over. Do it again, fucking idiot. Okay. Hello. 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 My name is James. Hello. My name is James. Blah, 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 blah. Pretty sure I just took a burst photo.